Hello, everybody. This is John. Welcome to the NCGA FMC Ag Weather Outlook for August 8th, 2015. Well, last week I said for most areas it looked like a fairly quiet week, and you can see here most areas in brown had only a couple days, if that much, of any precipitation over the last seven days. Now, there was a little streak of rain from parts of Nebraska into northern Missouri, especially in northern Nebraska. That was sort of a welcome rain. That area was trending dry in a few spots. Eastern Corn Belt, I think we can use a little bit more rain now. It's, we've had some dry weather, but on the other hand, uh, it's been very wet, so I think we could definitely use some dry weather as well. So for the last seven days, here we go. We see that northern Illinois, no rain at all, and that's really not all that long ago was the real wet spot. We see eastern Iowa fairly quiet, uh, areas in blue just light rain, and then we see uh, some areas of Minnesota, Wisconsin, up in the Great Lakes region, some more significant rain, and then south of the primary ag belt, some heavier rain as well. So for the most part, a fairly quiet week, and you can see that here as far as the departure from normal. You see uh, quite a bit of yellow, and that's indicating an inch or two of a deficit of rainfall drying out in parts of Iowa, northern Illinois, and just a few pockets here and there of above normal precipitation. That's that area in green, um, about an inch in a few spots, but very scattered. So overall, um, I think I'd characterize this as either a little bit above or a little bit of below normal, but nothing all that extreme over the last seven days. Now, soils still remain quite wet over parts of northern Missouri and also scattered areas of the eastern Corn Belt. Now, Look at the areas in white over Illinois, and that's showing that there has been some improvement in those areas. So we're definitely have broken the back of the real excessive rainfall. So we can probably use a little bit more. We don't want to go hot and dry, and I definitely don't see that extreme heat, but we probably want to have some manageable amount of precipitation as well. Um, as far as the western Corn Belt, I wouldn't mind at all seeing some additional rain over parts of the Dakotas, Nebraska, and even Kansas. If you look at that area, I don't see much yellow it, as far as soil moistures go. So um, we're sort of holding our own there. It's tending a little bit on the dry side, but right now it does not look like it's either widespread or excessively so. Now the pattern that we've had, I talked about going into this more amplified pattern with the hot weather out to the west. And you can see here over the last seven days, the green is below normal temperatures and anywhere from zero to four degrees below normal. And even some blue up there in northern Minnesota, that's six degrees below normal. So we have that dip in the jet stream. And remember last week I said I thought that that was going to persist for about a week or so and then gradually moderate. We'll take a look at that and see if that still looks like the trend. So this week we have that ridge of high pressure. That's this area right here. Uh, push it up to the north and that's sort of hot and dry in that ridge of high pressure and here's this dip and the dips pushing off to the east but really the area here between the the cooler drier air and the hotter air that's usually where we're going to have our transition and where we'd have our more significant chance of precipitation now I have this mislabeled here this is actually August 18th through 23rd and what you see here is this is your typical pretty much August type pattern. I don't see much shading of red or blue and what that's indicating is that there's no strong anomaly one way or the other. Jet stream is pretty much where it is and usually this time of year the precipitation is well up to the north um, in that jet stream. So this is really looks like as we uh, go into the next two or three weeks a fairly quiet type pattern. But that jet in the depth uh, dip in the jet stream will be causing uh, temperatures to be below normal. Um, temperatures uh, shaded in blue will be anywhere from two to maybe four degrees below normal. So not excessively so, but still considering it's August, that's really not bad either for us or for crops to be a little bit below normal. And you can see that covers a large part of the Corn Belt. If we look at temperatures um, this week, what we see here, these are high temperatures, um, and we're only looking at high temperatures in the 70s, so very uh, comfortable over parts of the Great Lakes and the Eastern Corn Belt. And then that trend into the Western Corn Belt, still quite a few 90s, but even so, the 100 degrees stay are pushed down to the south under that ridge of high pressure. If we get down into uh, later in August again, again, this is not, I haven't mislabeled, this is actually the 18th to the 23rd, late August, you can still see there's some signs of lingering cool air. So it's not showing any excessive heat wave, especially over the central and eastern Corn Belt.
Okay, now that was temperatures. So let's look at precipitation. This is really a notorious time to predict precipitation because what we see is we see a lot of the mechanisms that are causing precipitation are very localized and regional and models just can't really forecast that too well in advance. But right now it looks like the most likely chance of more significant rainfall is right along that boundary. I told you about that transition. There'll be a number of fronts right in this region to the south, generally hot and dry, maybe some scattered precipitation to the north, but again, nothing all that excessive. So it looks like actually for the corn producing states, the primary areas, it looks like a fairly quiet area. There will be some pockets of really heavy rain, but overall fairly quiet. I'll give you an example last week. At my house, um, we had three to four inches of rain, and it was very, very localized. So this is what you can get in summertime. I might be saying this could be a very quiet week, and you might get a lot of rain. So here are your precipitation anomalies as we go forward. Here's week one. You can see that area in green. Everywhere else is white, which is saying fairly normal, maybe a little bit below normal, a little bit above normal. This is this pattern I've talked about for quite some time where the focus of rain shifting off to the west, but near normal precipitation. I don't see any yellow anywhere in the corn belt right here, the primary corn belt. So it's shifting off to the west, and that's good because that's the area that's been the driest over the central U.S., uh, the upper uh, Midwest, and that area could definitely use a little bit more rain. So this is actually a very favorable type precipitation pattern with near normal precipitation over the eastern corn belt and above normal a bit over the west. Week three, very little change. Week four, very little change. So finally, after a very, very busy and active summer, it looks like things are quieting down a bit, but still I think now the pattern is going to be shifting over to the western corn belt. And this is, again, pretty promising, normal precipitation in the east, a bit above normal in the west. Now, if you're in the southeast U.S., you might have noticed this pattern. Uh, there was some welcome rain this week, but southeast has really been battling some dry weather. And if you look at this over the next four weeks, that is really a strong dry pattern in the southeast U.S. So your takeaway points from today's briefing, scattered storms, eastern Corn Belt, over the west, more scattered, but overall summertime temperatures, a bit cooler in the east, and a little change in this pattern for the next few weeks. Have a great summer week, and I will be talking with you again next weekend.